So what we're doing here is also trying to encourage a lot of young voiceover talents to come into the fold. Training, retraining. Have you had anyone train the trainer? We want to bring them in. We want to bring young talents talented voiceover across board, whether it's Hausa, Igbo, Yoruba, and all that. Well, as much as possible, we want to reach out to all these young people outside and see to it that we take over to the next level. And then, of course, we're breaking out into various uh, states, regionals. Hi, and welcome to the Everything Voiceovers podcast. I'm Chikot, an African voice talent from Nigeria, and this is my podcast, where I take on voiceover topics from an African perspective. On this episode, my guest is veteran Nollywood actor and president of the Association of Voiceover Artists of Nigeria, Avoa, Shegun Anrinze. He talks about the association and sheds more light on the country's ban on foreign voice actors. Sit back and enjoy this episode. Hello guys, welcome to the Everything Voiceovers podcast. My name is t and as usual, I bring on voiceover artists across Africa to discuss the issues, you know, facing voice actors in the continent. Today I have here one of Nigeria's most respected voice actors and in the voiceover industry. He is actually a legend in our industry. He's the one-time president of the Actors Guild of Nigeria. He's an actor, a coach, and the president of the Association of Voiceover Artists in Nigeria, Avoa. I'm talking about no other person than Shegun Anrinze. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you one of the veterans in the industry, Mr. Shegun Anrinze. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kualadi. Um, nice to be here. Nice to have you as well. All right. So um, today we're going to be talking about voiceovers in the continent, in the country, actually. We're going to be talking about Avoir and we'll be talking about uh, the recent Archon ban. You know, a lot of questions. <laughs> Everybody just wants to talk about Archon's ban. <laughs> a, a lot of questions, really. Okay. Uh, but I mean, you're in the best, best position to, to tell us more about it. But before we get into all of that, one of the things I like to do on the podcast for the African audience and even international audience is to understand our names because, you know, it could be mispronounced or misunderstood. So mm. you tell me the meaning of your name and a bit of your background. All right. Um, my I meaning of my name is, um, uh, you know, Shegu is a, is a short form of Olu Shegu. Yes. And that's uh, my God has conquered. Yeah. Um, some Yoruba say Mushegu or Tami, I've conquered my enemy. But Shegu in a nutshell means conqueror. And then but the second name, Arinze, it's also... Abbreviated. It's also a short uh, form for Arinze Chuku. Arinze mm. Chuku it means God's will, God's grace, mm. and God leads. Uh, that's what it means. What God says is what will, will prevail. Mm. And so um, I'm fully from Badagri, uh, Lagos State. My mm. mother is Igbo, and she gave me that name, Arinze mm. Chuku, and my father gave me Olu Shegu. So... So I'm, I'm surrounded by the Holy Spirit. I'm covered everywhere. God's grace, God's will, and conquer. Yeah, and I, I also know that you schooled in the north. Yes, I did. I schooled in the north. I schooled virtually almost part of Nigeria. I schooled in Kwara State. I schooled in uh, Edo State. I schooled in Asaba Delta State. And I went on to Kaduna. I went to Kano and uh, I went to Jaws as well mm-hmm. before coming back uh, to Lagos. I also went to Lori. Quara State before coming back to Lagos. So um, it, it afforded me an opportunity of knowing bits and pieces of things about Nigeria and places and events and people and the culture. The diversity of this country is quite, quite unique. Um, so it, it's a great time being a Nigerian. I know irrespective of the travels that we're going through, it's it's not a, it's not a Nigerian thing alone. It's a, mm. it's a global thing. Yeah. So uh, we're talking about global meltdown, financial crisis here and there, yeah. issues of governance and democracy and all that. Yeah. We all go through it. It's all signs of the times. Mm. So, um, but we'll keep pushing. We'll just keep pushing. Mm. Mm. And, and you're a voice actor, of course, a legendary one. Just out of curiosity, knowing that you explore different parts of the country and it got <coughs> exposed to the language, do you also do voiceovers in these different languages? Once in a while I do, um, but, but it's not my forte. I do English more. Mm-hmm. But when I'm generally speaking with my friends who are Hausas, Igbo, Yoruba, I, I communicate with them in that language. But um, I haven't really given it the thought of going full time reading voice, voiceovers in languages. But once in a while I do try. Oh, great. Great. Now, for over 30 years, you've been in the Nollywood. For 40. Over 40 years. Yes. In, in the- I started quite early. 
Wow. Yeah, I started b- way back very early. Um, even before I decided to go to IFE to study dramatic arts, I started working on the professional circuit. I actually started my career way back in Ilori, Kwara State, when I was in secondary school in ADD, Victory College of Commerce. Then um, later got changed to Victory Comprehensive College, but it, it's it's been a long time coming. Wow. 40 years, mm-hmm. you've worked as... A singer as well, an MC. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you have an album. <laughs> yes, I do have albums that I, I had uh, when I was a singer. But um, I just, just as in days, I decided to focus on my career more as an actor. Mm-hmm. And I felt that was, for me, more uh, push pushy. It was um, it, it brought me to the fore. Mm-hmm. Um, music, yes, I do still love music, but it, it didn't give me... In terms of what I wanted financially, it didn't give it to me. In terms of what I wanted artistically, it also did not give it to me. I, I some of my, my my guys in the recording label where I was were saying you're too way ahead of your time, and I wonder what it means by being too away, be, be too okay. ahead of your of your time. I don't I don't get what that means. <laughs> For me, no time. Every time you have, seize it, take the opportunity, and do what you have to do. Mm, wow. So when and how did you transition into voiceovers? I started as an actor. Okay. Uh, I've been an answer playhouse uh, way back in as far back as uh, 1984. Uh, I was in Playhouse with RMD with Francis on Watcher and quite a number of them. Uh, they were together in Ananza Playhouse with that elite Bassi F. Young. Mm-hmm. And from there, I had to go back to school to do dramatic arts. And when I got back from school, I still continued with my acting thing. And then I met a friend, uh, Kinsley Ogoro. We started partnering. And from there, um, my singing started coming and my voice over started coming. So, uh, so I, I went ahead to make an album on the premium music label um, called Dreams and well, the rest is history. Mm. And for voiceover, I got uh, I, I got into voiceover by, do I say faith or, or luck? Because I was in the studio working at Digitrack then with Tudia DJ Didi, who was the CEO then. And the Sony rapper walked in and was looking for someone to do a voiceover. Mm. And he didn't get, he just looked at me, hey, you can do it. And um, I said, what do you want me to do? He said, come, I'll show you. So he showed me uh, what he wanted me to do. And I read and it was interesting and it turned out very well. And uh, you know how to say, the taste of the pudding is in the eating. So I tested it, I liked it, I got stuck. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Mm. Now, I mean, it's been a, a long journey from when you started to now. Mm. Now you are the president of Nigeria's Association for Voice Actors, that's mm-hmm. Avoir. Mm. About 2021, which is last year, mm. was when you got um, elected, elected mm. as, as so why did you I mean you were before that time the president of the Actors Guild of Nigeria very true and you, you've had a, a tremendous career yeah. so why did you decide to take up the responsibility again for the voiceover industry <sighs> the pressure was much <laughs> <laughs> the pressure was so much everybody just say come please you need to come and do this we need to lead the association in, into into high, take the association to glory mm-hmm. glory land and since i'm not god so don't don't even think i'm not jesus but then um after much coercion and talking and all that and i'm me consulting with everybody members of my immediate family my wife and all that and she said well, you can do it go ahead mm-hmm. and so i i gave the nod and said okay and that's how i went into election and uh, i got the job of being the president of uh, association of voice of artists but i must tell you it's not been easy it's not been easy at all because you know you sometimes just find the members who just lack like a bicycle who are not uh Waking up to the responsibility and all, they all need to understand that government is all inclusive. When you mm-hmm. say leadership is all inclusive, you don't leave it because you have one person and the person has a name. So okay, you can do it. No, it doesn't work like that. Mm-hmm. What you need is to give the support, moral yeah. support. We're not even saying financial support here, but yeah. giving all the moral support, talking to the person, giving advice and all that. Mm-hmm. It, it gives you a sense of belonging rather than when you're working and nobody's saying anything to you, nobody's even saying kudos to you. Mm-hmm. It looks like you're a jackass and you're just working yourself out for no, for no reason. But uh, we won't give up. We will not give up. We'll continue to work. We'll continue to push. We'll continue to make sure that things are right with with the with the avoir. It's it's not it's not uh, peculiar to avoir alone. Yeah. It's, it's 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 a Nigerian thing to all associations mm-hmm. and, and and human beings or whatever you. Now that brings me to the next question: understanding that there are challenges inherent in the association. You talked about you know maybe members being a bit like desical to um, the activities of the association. Now that's a within challenge uh, and. From the outside perspective, the way people also view the association, it, it's no news that not many people have joined the association in recent times, um, maybe because of perspectives about what is going on. How do you address this uh, uh, challenge, this 
public view, that perception? It's a, it's, it's a general misconception that the, the, when you say that Avua doesn't have members. Avua has members. It just does. Like, I mean, I'm you know, about joining. Yeah, it's joining it. Um, a, lot of, a lot of members are also, also demarketed mm. the association when there was a grouse mm. with the former leadership. And so they started saying, okay, if you're not going to do this, we'll help you. And uh, they went ahead to demarket the association. But that's that, that's that's neither here nor there. The most important thing is the government is continuum. Mm-hmm. And so once you start something, you must finish it and hand, hand over to the next person. Mm-hmm. So we came in, I have a wonderful, wonderful ex go by the way. And we came in and we, we've drawn out a program and schedules and say, this is what we're going to do. I want to follow it um, to the letter and say, we, we, we need to execute all our all our plans. It's not an easy one. Like I said, you you're also looking at members who are like a days ago who don't want to do anything. But what we've decided to do is show leadership by example. Mm. And once you show leadership by example, everybody will fall in line. And then you be firm, you've mm. been controlled, be mm. totally in control. Say this is what I want to do. Sometimes you know you do some things, you stop all political position and push it through. Yeah. Uh, if you feel something sorry, don't be don't don't be embarrassed. There's nothing um, embarrassing in mm. saying sorry. You just go back and say, I'm sorry. I want to try again. And you go back and rejig and try again. But when you you're foolhardy and you think you're all knowing, you go ahead and say, Okay, you this that that because you think you're in a position mm. of authority. Mm-mm, no, so what we're doing here is also trying to en- encourage a lot of young voice of talents to come into the fold, mm. training, retraining. Have you heard what train the trainer? We want to bring them in. We want to bring um, young talented voice over across board, whether it's house or Igbo, Yoruba, and all that. There's something we're planning, yeah. but it's called the Voice Fest. Mm-hmm. And um, we, if we're able to do that, also get a lot of um, uh, people to come and help in, experienced people to come and help with the masterclass. I also will be having the masterclass. You know, pronunciation these days is some problem. Uh, social media has also not been very helpful in that wise. Mm-hmm. So you 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 need to go back to the to the basics, how to pronounce words, um, how to speak English properly, mm-hmm. and you want to do a voiceover, you need to do a the ways and the, the candor yeah. of how you do those things where you you don't just uh, take it for granted that because you think you know you might just end up shocking yourself and disappoint yeah. you get disappointed so yeah. well as much as possible to reach out to all these young people outside and see to it that we take over to the next level and then of course we're breaking out into various uh, states regionals so we'll be merging like two or three states together and creating zones for the and having coordinators to mm. help run run Avoir and make it broad spectrum and let people know that there's something called Avoir. Um aside the fact that we were lucky mm. recently to be on CNN and Al Jazeera, a number of people did not even know there's anything called Avoir. Exactly. But as we by virtue of the fact that, uh, that Ark and Banda voices and models, they, they want to talk to somebody, they need somebody to talk to, and we're, we're just lucky to be at the place at the right time. So they talk to us about that. Mm-hmm. And that in itself is giving Avo some level of uh, recognition. of recognition, visibility, visibility, let me use that word. Yeah. And so that's it. But the most important thing is I'm youth-centric, and I want to bring in as many youths as I can mm-hmm. to come and work. Listen, if you do voiceovers, you're talented, you can do voiceovers, and you, you'll find that you'll be making more money than you can even imagine, mm-hmm. because it's a paying job. Mm-hmm you get well paid for, for doing voiceovers. Even when you don't even get well paid, but you build your career to a level that everybody wants you. You become the choice voice for, mm. for brands and products and services. So mm. um, I want to make sure that I, 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 I do that. That would be one of my greatest achievements, seeing that I, I get a lot of young people to come in mm. and um, let's take our voice to the next level. Uh, this is a very brilliant um plan that you have with your team quite charismatic <coughs> you know and I, I believe that having more young people in Avoir will help move the industry to the next level yeah. um, but then the question will be for because there are right now as we speak a lot of young people doing voiceovers and some are doing very well for themselves so the question is why should they join Avoir? Why should they join Avoir? Because Avoir provides that platform for you to express yourself with Avoir will help you fight for your right to create an enabling environment for you. What we want to do at Avoir is also help to create an enabling environment for for members. And also when you have issues, we go all out and fight for you. And we also can recommend you. We're not saying that we have jobs, we're giving no jobs, but yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a platform that yeah. helps to project you. Mm-hmm. Um, we also have these radio dramas that we're trying to do and trying to get young and new members coming. So we put them on the radio drama. And even if it's allowances I give them yeah. outside their main the core job, that it's yeah. it's fine. Yeah. Um, there is no time you don't need a voiceover artist to do something for you. Mm. Whether you're in a hall doing an event and you want to say hello, uh, mm. somebody packed cars, somebody will just be 
outside there holding the microphone and say, well, please, the car number, so, 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 please. That's a voiceover, whether you like it or not. Yeah. <laughs> Do you understand? Yeah. So we we need to train people um, on air. We have on-air personalities. You have people who do commercials, product documentaries, and all that. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a platform that I want to create that will enable you make money for yourself and make something for your career. Mm. Fantastic. And um, now that you're talking about the reasons they should join, I'm talking about the fact that Avoir is going to protect their rights. Of course, definitely. That's the first and foremost thing, to so protect their rights. We have a case on hand right now. Mm. Um, somebody who did the voiceover for a brand, and after he left, they took that brand six years after, and still, the agency swapped. The, the client changed agency, and the other agency now gave them the voiceovers of the, of the artist until now they're not paying. We also need to talk about residual money. Why would you want to do a voiceover five years down the line? Somebody's still using it, you're not getting paid for it. Exactly. So there has to be residual money. And if you get residual money, it's something that every time sometimes you know that there's some money coming, no matter how small, but let's say it was 1,000 naira a month. Mm. I mean, the journey of 1,000 miles begins at one step. So I'm, I'm all for making sure that agencies pay residual money. And also, I'm, I'm planning on going out to go and see head of advertising agencies and have a jaw jaw with them. Mm. And let's sit down and talk about uh, rejigging the whole voiceover experience thing. So when we're going to do these masterclasses, voice first we're doing, we're also going to be bringing a lot of head of agencies to come and let's sit down and talk. Mm. It's not just going to be only the training. That's why we say voice first. We'll bring the MDs in or uh, agency heads and all that. Let's sit down. Let's talk about voiceovers. Let's talk voice. Let's talk about what would you want to do with the voice? What do you want to do with this talent, how do you want to appreciate the talent? Going five, six years down the line, how do you want to see yourself as a voice of artist? How does the agency want to see you? Mm -hmm. How do you get residual money for things that you have done? How do you stop exploiting you? And how does the government, the government's not going to give you a job or give you money, but what are the right policies that the government are going to put in place to help protect the voice of industry? Mm, great. Um, and this is very, I mean, we can only pray for proper execution because we've had... Oh, yes, that, you're, you're very correct in that way. Sometimes your ideas can be very lofty and yeah. before you know, it fizzles out. So you've got to have a team, a very vibrant team. I'm very happy that I have a very vibrant ESCO, but it's not just going to be left out to Che Guarins as president of Avoa and the ESCO, no. Mm -hmm. It's going to be an all-encompassing thing with all members. So if you have a vibrant team working with you, you go places. Mm. You just go places. There are a lot of young stars in Avoir that I intend to tap into their, to their head and say, hey, come on, you, you come and do so, so, and so, yeah. and so forth. Set up a think tank team mm. that they always do. So it, it's rejigging, remodeling, redeveloping, mm. and restructuring Avoir. Great. And I should also say for the record, I probably am the newest member. Of oh, you're welcome. <laughs> you're very welcome. So I'm, I'm so proud. I'm so proud of you and what you're doing. And I, I, I pray that you continue and God will give you the strength to continue. Yeah. Um, you know the, what they say, little acorns make an oak tree. So yes. let's, let, uh, we pray for you that you succeed in everything that you try Thank to you do to talent. And, and I'll also use this opportunity to encourage people because this is my own perspective about this. As much as we have a union that is supposed to fight or an association that is supposed to protect our interests, we don't leave the work to them so if you join the association you can also contribute your own quota and and make things work now i've also interacted with a lot of voice actors talent in nigeria and one of our biggest issues is the issue of rates <laughs> it, it, it is and people, people feel that, like that, that's that's what we've been talking it's about not standard. it's not standard yes um but then you also understand sometimes people find themselves in desperate situations and a job just comes and let me just take it. I need to sort this problem out. Mm. Because you you say, okay, you've got to use this rate. The person will come and say, oh, rate. Oh, you're doing rate for me. Let me go get somebody else. And because you're desperate, you need money to solve that issue. You don't, you don't even know when you close your eyes and take that, that job. But that's one of the things we want to actually help put a stop to. Mm. These are the standard rates. Let's go by the standard rates. Yeah, once in a while you might find somebody say, okay, help me. Helping is there's no harm in helping anybody in doing something, but yeah. when there's a level of help you can get becomes you become helpless. Mm. <laughs> you know that. Yeah. So um we were as much as what we want to talk about about rates. That's what part of the things we also want to put it in voice first. Let's talk about the rate and we'll talk with the agency and also talk with Arkan and then we will we'll sort that out. We we'll need to. Mm. It, 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 nothing's ever fixed. You no, know? nothing's ever permanent, but you keep working, like I said, you keep restructuring, rejigging, and um, redevelopment and all that that you... Mm. Uh, so we'll see to you now. Oh, great, because people have been talking about the fact that globally now, there are different innovations as regards rates that mm. we need to incorporate in the Avoir rates. And another challenge that I've noticed in, in, in since I started doing voice acting in Nigeria mm. is the fact that 
Although there is the ex- existence of Avoa, mm-hmm. right now as we speak, we're in the voice house in yeah, Lagos. Yeah. In, in, in the right, studio. In the studio. Unfortunately, the physical representation of Avoa, we don't find that digitally pronounced as mm. such. You, you go to the internet and you have just trickles. And that also affects people's access to what the rate card or the rate guide uh, dictates for voice actors. But, right? Like I said, we will work on that. Mm. We'll definitely work on that. It's a mindset thing. We also need to change the mindset of members as well because sometimes they get very disillusioned because they think that the leadership is not doing anything. Mm. But since we got in, it's been a lot of work, work, work. We keep judging and finding meetings and finding ways around it. But we will get there. It's not a one-day thing, yeah. but we will certainly, certainly get there. Yeah. Uh, right now, everybody may not be happy. We, even we at, at the school are not happy, but it is what it is. We'll just continue to work and see to it that we get to try and get it right. We'll, right. Like I said, we'll continue to judge with everybody right. and so that we'll get it right. All right, now let's talk about Arkhan and the band. Mm. Obviously, it has, <laughs> it has attracted... World attention. <laughs> exactly. And initially, of course, of course, it, it was... From what the statement read from Akon, it is to build and to develop local talent, mm. which is a very credible initiative. If one would look at it from the <clears throat> yes, um, I'm in support of grooming local talents to yes. take over. I'm in support of keeping it here, do all the work here, rather than take it out and you're spending foreign exchange and you take that money, bring it here, yeah. the talent does the job. Yeah. Use that same money from that same money and pay residual money. Yeah. From that money, train yeah. and retrain the talent. Why would you want to take all that job out? Mm. Most times you take those jobs out, they don't even call the name, pronounce the names right. Mm. You hear, okay, it's an accent. Yes, they tell you it's a global thing that it, um, they want uh, to be part of the global market and so on. I find those as excuses. We have a lot of talented Nigerians, voice for talents who speak English very well. Yeah who speak French, who speak Spanish very well. You want to do those translations, do it here, take it out there. You're so exposing and putting your, your, your talents on the global stage. Mm. Now, it's it. I would not say it's a total ban. Maybe we, everybody's misconstruing what the whole idea is. But if everybody wants to protect his own. Mm. Every country, I was on CNN, I was I'm talking with King Kale, I think I remember. And I said, listen, it's a selfish world. Mm. Everybody wants to protect their own. And she agreed in the course of the, of the interview. A lot of countries want to. South Africa did it. I, want, I was just like, no, I don't think any Nigerian will go to South Africa and go and do voiceovers or do modeling. They will, they will, they will frown at it. Even if they're allowed to the, the certain level, they will still frown at it because they want their own, their own people to do it. Ghana did it. The one time, as we speak right now, you can't even go to Ghana to go shoot a movie. Mm. How many times, you know, I know at the point in time, Nigerian doors were open for, for, for the actors to come in. Ghanaians were coming here, Kenya were coming, shooting. They don't even, they won't even allow you Nigerians to come in, to come and do that. Mm. Do you understand? So, um, we will continue to talk about it. With relevant authorities, with the relevant corporate bodies, advertising agencies, we'll find a meeting point where we'll all agree about something. Uh, I will not uh, say that it's a total ban. Because you do that to my auto, my boomerang itself, exactly. my, my boomerang. So we we'll just find a way to find ways of of, of middle ground. Okay, this 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 stays here. This 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 can go out. Mm. You know, so just find a meeting point. Find a middle ground. Now, from this conversation, it seems as though to me that there has been a challenge of interpreting what that statement from Arkon. There, there has been a challenge of interpreting what it means. What, what Arkon is saying is protect, grow the local talent here, empower them. That's what we're saying. Mm. We're not saying don't go and do this and do that, but empower, look inwards first. Mm. I mean, look, see what Britain did with them. They looked inwards. Look at the premiership today. Everybody wants to go play in premiership. Look, then at, they... look, at the, look at the modeling industry. Look at the fashion industry. Mm. Look at the radio and voiceover industry there. They got to a certain level. They built, then they opened the door. You can come in. So this sounds like we need to build first and if, then we open up. Exactly. You're getting the point, Kaladi. Build first, then open your door, say, the house is ready. But the, now there's this fear from talents in the country mm. that if we are shutting off the Westerners mm, from the world. jobs, yes. how about if they do the same? Because there are a lot of Nigerian talents that they make a bulk of their money from P2P sites, you know, where they can, casting sites. I just told you, mm. 
my idea and my concept of what it is. What it is. It's to protect, groom, build first. We're not saying it's outright 100% to your banning. There's no way in the world you can ban anything 100%. Hmm. You can only put, okay, let's use the word. Maybe we're using the wrong word for now. Right. Maybe let's say we're using the wrong word, but let's say restriction for now. Mm. You know, in a bank, sometimes there's something wrong with your account. What do they do? They put a lien on it. Mm. You won't be able to spend money. Yeah. When you sorted that whole matter out, they take the lien off. So let's look at it in that wise. Mm. A lien has been put for now. When you sort it out, you take it off. Mm. Fantastic. Mm. Great. So um, let's get back to, because there's a lot we could talk about Akon, but then Akon is mm. not Avoa. Akon is the regulatory, advertising regulatory council exactly. of Nigeria. And yeah. Avoa has its own job. Yes, and we also have our opinion about what, what our, our corner said, and that's what we've said. We'll be meeting with them very soon. Um, I have the meeting with them, and we'll find a way to sort of adjusting. All right. For people that would love to join Avoa, um, what's the process like? How do they go about it? Well, um, we'll be sending out some information very soon, like we did in the early days of this administration. They go online and register. So we'll go out. We'll send them out. They'll go online and register and pay a certain amount to, to GT, or to Heritage Bank. It's twenty five thousand naira to join, and then we'll process them. Then we also want to encourage all of them to come to the Voice House, and have a Voice Bank. Um, have, you can record deep, small, small voices that can they can use as samples to send out to various agencies. Okay, try me and all that. But we'll, we'll put out information very soon on our Instagram page and our Facebook page and all that. And um. Our site went down as soon as we can get the site back on. Um, we we'll also put the information there, but right now we're dealing with Facebook, with, with Instagram, and with TikTok. We'll pass the information out, and of course, we'll, on WhatsApp for everybody to get get the message and then join. And we're, our voice is also expanding in, uh, across across the country. We're going to be having zonal coordinators around the, the 36 states, including the, uh, including the, the FCT. Uh, FCT. Um, we just want to see today a lot of young people coming to Alvoa and let's take this thing to the next level. Wow, great. Thank you so much, Mr. Shem. Um, before we go, just for the fun of it, what do you do when you're not voice acting or? I drive myself around, listen to good music, or I go to cinema, see a movie, or I go home, sleep, wake up, use my phone, work, and that's that. Um, I love wine, so if I have yeah. the time, I take red wine, sit down with my friends and take wine. And I love politics. I like to talk about politics. Okay. I love to talk about everything, actually, broad spectrum. Okay. It's called a kaleidoscope. So I like to do kaleidoscope. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And uh, one last thing. What are your advice to up and coming talents? Keep working. There is no substitute to hard work. Keep working. And um, don't get disillusioned. Don't just ever get disillusioned because you think somebody turned you down. Turned you down, it doesn't mean that you cannot come up tomorrow. And sometimes the rejected stone becomes the chief corner stone, becomes the corner stone. So keep working. Keep working. And, you know, one most important thing, keep asking questions. Even when you think you're right, ask so you'll be doubly sure. Never tire. Never get tired of asking questions. Ask, you never miss your way and keep walking. Listen to radio, listen to people who are masters in the business, learn to pronounce words the right way. Listen, I'm not saying mimic them or try and become, try and speak English more than the English man. No, that's not what I'm saying, but I mean, makes sense. Makes sense when you speak English and when you say those words. And I wish you all the best. See you on the air and listen to you more there. Thank you very much, Welcome. Mr. Shegman Rize. You heard it, that's uh, Shegman Rize, the president of the Association of Voice Over Artists of Nigeria, Avoa. And it's been a nice time talking to him about the voiceover industry in Nigeria. Well, guys, um, we'll meet next time on another episode of the Everything Voiceovers, the African Perspective podcast. I remain Tiko saying keep voicing and keep winning. Bye. If you enjoyed this episode, subscribe, leave a comment and tell someone about it. Follow the podcast on Everything Vios on all social media platforms. Thanks for listening and see you on the next episode.